yeah, it's really interesting. I'm going to go into my third story here, which is about the food shortage. So let me go ahead and grab that because this is all connected. And this is what I was telling you about the economy. Regardless if Joe Biden comes on TV and tells you that the unemployment numbers are so great and I'm doesn't tell you that the reason why the unemployment numbers are so low is because he kicked people off of unemployment in September. I don't know. I've said that multiple times, but every time and then I get new people that join the show, but that's important for people to know. He's making it seem like they're low because everyone's getting all these jobs. They're not getting all these jobs. In fact, almost every place I go to here in Massachusetts, he has a sign on the door that says now hiring or need help now. They're not getting those jobs. They're not taking those jobs because they don't pay a living wage because they don't give them any kind of benefits because you're still have people in this country in certain States where the minimum wage is still $7 and 25 cents an hour. That's why they're not taking those jobs. So regardless if Joe Biden continues to come on TV and tell people, oh yes, the unemployment numbers are great and lies to the American people. I think the time has finally come that people are looking at their own material conditions and they are realizing that it is not working. And if it hadn't been for a pandemic, I don't think a lot of people would have woken up yet because people kept believing these lies and you hear those lies and you think to yourself, well, damn, they say the economy's great. It must just be me. I must be the one that's doing something wrong. Maybe I don't have a good job. Maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I'm not working enough hours a week, even though I'm working 60 hours a week. Maybe I don't know how to budget. Maybe I don't know how to save. Those are the things that they will tell you. Maybe I didn't pull myself up by my own bootstraps. But for the first time in my lifetime, I feel like more American people are finally looking at their own material conditions and realizing that the media and the president, they are lying to you. They're all corporate and it is so corrupt. It's different when you're living through it. It's different when you see how much you have to pay for gas. When you see money just flowing out of your wallet and you have to continue to fill up your gas tank because the gas prices are so damn high. It's different when you walk into the grocery store and someone mentioned this earlier. Now you realize you got to pay $4 for a gallon of milk. People are starting to see from their own material conditions. And that is what I encourage all of you to do. Pay close attention to what's going on in your life, in your neighborhood, and shush the noise from mainstream media. A lot of those people on CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, a lot of those people are rich. What? Just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. So Joe Biden brought up the fact that we may be headed for a food shortage. Listen to this. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re, re, so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. And uh, because both uh, Russia and Ukraine have been the breadbasket of Europe in terms of wheat, for example, just to give one example. But we had a long discussion uh, in the G7 with, uh, um, the, uh, with both uh, the United States, which has a, has a significant, the third largest producer of wheat in the world, as well as Canada, which is also a major, major producer. And we both talked about how we could increase and disseminate more rapidly food, food shortages. And in addition to that, we talked about uh, urging all the European countries and everyone else to end trade restrictions on, on sending uh, lim limitations on sending food abroad. And so we are in the process of working out with our European friends what it would be, what it would take to help alleviate the concerns relative to uh, food shortages. 
Do you think uh, that Russia needs to be removed from the G20? On the latter point, my answer is yes. It depends on the G20. First of all, I don't even know if Joe Biden even knows where he's at right now. Second thing I want to bring up, which I've been trying to like give people a heads up about for the people who were cheering about the sanctions, I told you sanctions, this, this would all come back <laughs> for the people who were cheering about the sanctions on Russia. I told you, you should never be for economic warfare, regardless if it's our country or another country, you should never approve of that. And anyone who's telling you that you should be okay with that, dismiss those talking points right now. The people in those countries will struggle. The people in those countries will suffer. Just like I showed you what happened to the kids in Iraq, what's happening right now to the children in Afghanistan. And now it is going to come back on us. And this is what I was trying to warn people. Putting those sanctions on Russia was not just going to affect Russia. It was going to affect us too. This is not, this is not a one-off. This is not a one country thing. Someone mentioned earlier in the chat, then why the hell is he doing the sanctions, right? Trust, this is more about power than anything. I told you guys, the United States government usually does not intervene unless there's some type of resources at play. I told you about the pipeline, the Nord 2 pipeline. So this idea that we just really care about the people in Ukraine and we're trying to help the Ukrainian people is bullshit. This is what the United States government does. Now I'm seeing on the news that the United States government said we can bring in over 100,000 refugees from Ukraine. Really? If we have a food shortage, so we can bring in refugees from Ukraine, but we couldn't bring in refugees from Syria? What? What about the kids in Syria? Remember that? They said, no, no, they can't come here. No, no, no. Remember the refugees from Haiti? They met them at the border said, go back. No, can't bring them in. What about the refugees in Yemen? Oh, nope. Not supposed to talk about that. Can't bring them in. What about the people in Somalia that the United States government is destroying? Can't bring them. It seems like to me, you can only bring in a certain type of people. In that sense, Joe Biden is no different from Trump because Trump said that same thing. You can't bring over. We want the good immigrants. We want the good educated ones like from Norway. Remember he said that? Seems like to me when it's immigrants of color, they don't want them to come here. I tried to warn people about this. This is why I keep telling people we need to learn how to grow our own food. If you don't know how to do this, this is not something we should be sitting on. In fact, we should have started doing this back when the pandemic first started, because that was a big reality like check for us, right? Going into the grocery store and seeing half the food gone, all the toilet paper was gone. We should be building community with each other and feeding each other because people who are rich, when the food prices increase again, they will not be affected. Joe Biden is not gonna be affected. They will make sure he still has food to eat. The celebrities that a lot of people are out here worshiping and praising, I'm gonna let you know right now, they will be okay. Let's see if those same people are willing to donate to the American people the same way they were willing to donate money to people in Ukraine. I bet not many. This is a problem. And now there's so many people saying, oh no, we may not have enough food. What are we going to do? 
said, I hate to tell you so, but I've been saying this. And over at Revolutionary Blackout Network, we've been saying this. RJ had someone on last year, months ago, that did a whole stream on how to grow your own food. I will have someone on next week to talk about that. So this is a problem. Thank you so much for asking that question, Liz. If you live in an apartment, how can you grow your own food? So there's a guy named Logan. He's on the Populist Voice Network. He actually did a stream during our General Strike Summit where he showed you videos of how he actually does that. He lives in an apartment in New York City. He has a garden. And I need to get him to come on too so he can tell you guys how to do that as well. And I have to find that video for you. But Logan showed us that even though he lives in an apartment, he can still grow his own food and he shows people like how you can still do it. So yes, Logan would need to come on too. Thank you so much for that because not everybody lives on the farm. Not everybody has access to land. That's important. 